What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video and today we're here with our final Linux Switch video. Now I've actually been using Linux for quite some time, about a month and a half, almost two months at this point, although I only shot the first few videos like a little bit of time ago and then release them early or release them late and then releasing this one early and yeah either way on YouTube it's been about a month or a little bit under a month however in actually using the operating system I've been going for about a month and a half at this point so today we're gonna recap what I like about it what I don't like about it and then finally will I be switching to this operating system as my desktop and laptop options so with that being said let's kick things off with some positives and the things that I do like about it first and Almost though is the awesome user interface. At first I was a little bit on the fence of the whole Ubuntu interface but after using for quite some time I really do enjoy it. And that microphone's falling down we better fix it. So with the microphone fixed and speaking of fixing things 4k scaling is also to another thing that has been fixed over on the Ubuntu side really just Linux in general. Over on the Windows side 4k scaling as if you've ever used it yourself or if you've ever watched any video where I've been complaining about it sucks but for some reason out of the box Linux just loves it and everything works perfectly and I don't exactly know the technical way how their scaling works but from what I can tell one pixel equals four pixels and everything just works there's no weird scaling the text actually fits in everything and much like over on the Mac side it flat out just works which is something that I really do like about it so for me 4k scaling absolutely was on point and puts Windows to shame even though it is a free open source operating system and that is something that I really do like about it. Not to mention the actual fact that the user interface was good and scaled well, it was also too very very lightweight and made the i7 and 16 gigs of RAM in this laptop feel like an i10 and insane amount of RAM because Linux basically takes no resources or very little resources it leaves a lot for the programs that are using it to actually take advantage of a lot of that hardware. So basically everything I did felt snappy, fast and responsive. And even though Linux doesn't exactly have the same level of driver compatibility and hardware kind of, I guess, development that what Windows and Mac OS X has, at the end of the day, it still worked flawlessly for me. The NVMe SSD was blazingly fast and everything felt snappy and ready to go. I really did like that. Battery life was also to another bit of a plus here. Although it was slightly less than Windows, it was still actually pretty good. And seeing that the last time I tried to jump on uh, Linux and I had terrible battery experiences, this wasn't too bad. I can get about four to five hours on Windows and I was getting around three and a half to four hours on the Linux side. So really, whilst there was a bit of a drawback there, it wasn't like going from five hours down to one hour. It actually wasn't too bad. And not to mention, I just really love the customizability as well as the power that Linux brings to the actual system. For me, as I am a IT administrator and also to someone who's studying in IT to become further up in that chain, uh, for me, the power that Linux brings is absolutely awesome. Being able to control things on a network really easily, using distros of Linux that are more for uh, networking is also too bit of a plus, even though I mainly stayed on the Ubuntu front. Uh, overall, I really love the admin power that Linux does bring and overall is a really awesome operating system there. And then also to finally, whilst I didn't spend a whole much of time on this was gaming. Gaming was definitely awesome to have Steam actually working really, really well. Up until recently, other than using SteamOS, I'd basically never used Steam on Linux and I was actually presently surprised uh, to see how much development and how much support there actually was. And most games that I did want to play had a Linux option anyway. So I was even more happy there. So overall, in terms of the gaming front, whilst I didn't exactly play a whole ton of games in my time, uh, definitely when I did want to jump on there and have a look what was going on, uh, the Linux platform really wasn't too bad. However, whilst there was quite a few positives, there definitely were a couple drawbacks when using the Linux operating system. First and foremost was lack of wide support for software and applications. For me, the built-in applications and the apps that you guys did suggest were actually really, really good. And thank you guys so much for suggesting those applications. Uh, but for me, if someone sends me a Photoshop document, I need to edit that Photoshop document in Photoshop using the Photoshop tools and then send it back to them in a Photoshop file. So yes, there are workarounds and you can use 
other programs to edit PSD files and those kind of things. But for me, spending the best part of the past five, six years using and learning Photoshop, for me, those are the skills that I want. And Photoshop wasn't the only example. Things like Adobe Illustrator, After Effects, uh, Premiere Pro, all those video files and creation tools that I've learnt over again the past five or six years. Damn, it's been a long time. But all the time that I put into learning it basically can't be run here on the Linux front. Now, yes, I'm sure some of you are saying that you could use something like Wine or there are other workarounds to actually get uh, Adobe running on Linux and that is totally possible and I did play around with it. However, it isn't as easy as just pushing the install button, everything loads up and everything is good to go. Now, with that being said, definitely as Linux does push forward and we see more and more adoption of this platform as what we did in 2017, uh, I would not be surprised at all if the Adobe Suite comes over to the Linux front very, very soon. But unfortunately, at the time of recording, it was a little bit of a disappointment when someone sent me a video file or a Photoshop file and said to edit this and I had this laptop with me and I had to, well, go home or get another computer or boot back into my Windows partition to actually get that file done. Now, again, yes, one could have been a thing, but uh, it didn't exactly work out. Now, on top of this, whilst battery life definitely was good, it wasn't as good as the Windows solution, and it was also, too, again, a little bit of a letdown. Now, as I did mention in previous videos, Linux is definitely getting really, really good when it comes to hardware compatibility. However, unfortunately, when it comes to laptop and mobile devices, that actually are built hand in hand with Windows usually or Mac OS X, the low power states that KB Lake, Skylake and the new Coffee Lake offer aren't exactly fully technically supported. So yes, there is definitely workarounds and also too, again, there are some versions of Linux and some CPUs that all work together for flawless experience. However, mine would not enter its super low profile state. So this is a Skylake based laptop and whilst it did get down to its lower power state, it couldn't go into its super low kind of power state where it would use much less power. Now, this resulted in anywhere from half an hour to an hour to even two hours in some cases less battery, which in the grand scheme of things wasn't exactly too bad because I wasn't exactly relying on the battery too much. I could easily just plug it in. Uh, but at the same time, definitely was a bit of a problem, especially if you're someone on the go who wants to actually use Linux as a mobile platform. Definitely completely usable. I mean, three and a half to four hours with a battery life, perfectly fine. But when I jump over to Windows, I could be getting four and a half to five hours that kind of hour of battery life could mean the difference between getting something done and not getting something done. But overall, if you're looking at getting this on a desktop or a laptop, that doesn't really matter about battery life. I mean, Linux is going to be perfect for that situation. But overall, that's really all my complaints. And all in all, Linux is definitely a very flexible operating system with distros actually addressing many of my issues that I have here, but then also to bringing along their own issues there. Personally, I really love the power it brings, especially on the network and administration side, I absolutely love what Linux is bringing there and probably would switch to Linux if I was only doing network administration and admin type of work. And I also do love the fact that it could also to be reskinned into a very simple media center type operating system. And I just love the sort of high-end advanced options that you can have, but also to the simplistic kind of ease of use experience. I really love that large spectrum that Linux does have to offer. However, for me in day-to-day -day usage, I do need a laptop that can offer the support, software, and battery life that Mac OS X computers and also to Windows-based laptops can deliver. Don't get me wrong, there's some really talented teams out there working on the Linux platform and also to a lot of software out there that works on Linux that is actually legitimately better than what Windows and Mac has and I really wish they were over there, although a lot of them do have other versions for, again, Linux and Mac, or rather Windows and Mac. Uh, but overall, for me, as a full-time laptop user and also to desktop user, it just doesn't feel ready enough for me to make the full switch over there. However, with that being said, my teleprompter PC, or should I say teleprompter PC, running the teleprompter right now, is actually going ahead and running Linux with a uh, piece of software on there that's known as Telecaster, and it works absolutely flawlessly, or almost flawlessly. I'm still learning my way around getting Telecaster to work and that kind of stuff, but all in all, 99% of these videos sort of from when I started using Linux to now, the teleprompter PC that I'm running and you guys can't exactly see, uh, has been perfectly 
fine with running telecast on the Linux platform, so I've really enjoyed it there. Now take a look at how Linux adoption has definitely increased in 2017. I think 2018 is going to be another awesome year for the Linux platform, seeing more and more people jump on it, as they're not really liking Windows 10 and Mac OS 10 is also too not exactly for everyone out there. So I think another year, maybe even two years of actual adoption of this platform, and we will see some really awesome versions of Linux coming out, and also do a lot more software jumping over onto the Linux platform. It's just a matter of time. But again, unfortunately, whilst I did love my time with Linux, unfortunately, it just won't be my daily driver for the foreseeable future. But let me know what you think of Linux down in that comment section. Do you run it as a daily driver, or do you sort of run it hand in hand with Linux or Mac OS 10, or rather Windows and OS 10 uh, as a third option? I think it's really awesome as an extra option, but for me personally, I just can't switch to it yet. But again, let me know what you run down below. Otherwise, guys, with that being said, that's about it for this series of Linux switching videos. Thanks all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one. Wow.